Good morning, dear friends in Christ, and a happy new year to you on the second Sunday after Christmas, January 2nd, 2022. In this new year, we turn our attention to Luke's gospel in chapter 2, picking up a little bit where we left off from last week. Uh, We see the young Jesus, a panicked Mary and Joseph after leaving Jerusalem. Uh, It suddenly dawns on them that they're missing their 12-year-old son, Jesus. And after a thorough search among the people traveling with them, the family, they eventually head back, and they find Jesus in what place but the temple. And Mary and Joseph are clearly upset with Jesus, and they scold him. And Jesus answers, Did you not know that I must be in my Father's house? It's there in Jesus' statement that he reveals where he may be found for all of us. Jesus is here, in his Father's house, in God's word, in the sacrament, among the things of his Father. So this morning, let us enjoy our time together in Jesus' presence as we continue looking at Luke's gospel. If you'd like to follow along with our service, you may do so by turning to page 285 in your hymnals for responsive prayer too. Dear friends, let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday after Christmas is from 1 Kings chapter 3. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness and righteousness and an uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of of David, my father, although I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil, for who is able to govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, and God said to him, Because you have asked this, and not have asked for yourself long life or riches or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you has been before you, and none like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare with you all your days." And if you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings and made a feast for all his servants. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistles from Ephesians chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of his will so that we who are the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, 
to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. The child Jesus grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was twelve years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey, but then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who were All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. We join together in praying our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My dear friends, grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, our text this morning is from Luke chapter 2. And we read, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them, asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? Here we get a brief glimpse of Jesus' childhood, really the only glimpse of Jesus' childhood in the scriptures. It says Jesus was strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. We also get a glimpse of Mary and Joseph here as well as parents. And they don't come off as the most responsible parents. After all, they did just lose the Son of God. But I can imagine the panic and the heartache that they felt. Imagine your own child, lost in a sea of people. Imagine the panic, unsure if you're ever going to see them again. Nobody in your family has seen them. It's not a pleasant thought. And my heart goes out to any parents whose child has been lost and never found. But fortunately, that's not the case here. Mary and, Je- Mary and Joseph did indeed find their child. They found him in a rather unusual place for a 12-year-old boy. Jesus was in the temple, talking and conversing with the teachers. And of course, when Mary and Joseph found him, they were astonished, amazed. 
And Mary, just like any good mother, begins to chastise Jesus, saying, Why did you do that? Your father and I have been panicked, searching for you. Don't you know that we were looking for you? However, Jesus' answer reveals something very important. He says to them, Why were you looking for me? Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? Now, this interaction reveals that Mary and Joseph did not yet fully comprehend what was going on here. I think they forgot who their son is. This is not some ordinary child. Jesus was wise well beyond his years, astounding the teachers at the temple who were amazed at his understanding and the answers he provided. Something that we will see Jesus do throughout his whole ministry as he stumps the Pharisees and answers their questions. No, this is no ordinary child. The last part of Jesus' statement reveals something incredible as well. Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? Well, remember, Mary had just said, your father and I have been searching for you. Now, however, they are not talking about the same father. Here, Jesus is revealing who his true father is. This reveals that Jesus is the son of God the promised one, the one who will take away the sins of the whole world. Jesus says he must be in his father's house. You see, Jesus is never really the one lost here. We are. We're the ones who are lost, wandering aimlessly around in this world, thinking, what do I do? Mary and Joseph are really also the ones who are lost in this text. They're the ones who are frantically searching for Jesus. They have no clue what to do or where to find him or where to turn. But the answer is so simple. When you actually stop and think about who Jesus is. Of course he would be found in his father's house. Why would he be anywhere else? Like I said, Jesus is never the one who's lost. We are. We're the ones who have lost our way. We're the ones who have wandered off the path that God has set before us. We're the ones who have sinned against our Father, who have run with the crowds only to get hopelessly lost in the shuffle. We are disobedient children. And the question is, where do we find ourselves at the end of the search? Are we still wandering around lost? Or will we also be found in our Father's house? Unfortunately, so many in our world wander aimlessly looking for meaning in their lives. They have many questions and they seek answers. But where are they going to find those answers? There's self-help books, both religious and secular. People turn to psychics, science, maybe psychology or philosophy. But how many have turned to God for their answers? Have we encouraged our neighbors to seek answers in God's house? Have we raised our families to open their scriptures and seek the words of our Lord? Have we done everything to point people to our Father's house where Christ may be found? It begs the question, have we, like Mary and Joseph, searched as hard as we could for those who are lost, and have we shown them where Jesus may be found? Truthfully, we haven't done everything we can. Those of you who tune in here on on our online service or join us in God's house, you who are here in his house, know the way. You know where Jesus is found. He's found here in his father's house. Jesus is found in the word. He's found in baptism. He's found here on our altar. Jesus is here in his father's house, our father's house. One of my greatest challenges as well as greatest joys as a pastor is teaching confirmation class. Because there I get the chance to direct kids to our Father's house. I get to share with them God's word and teach them. And they constantly astound me with their questions and their desire to learn. But the most important thing is I get to tell them where to find Jesus. But I only have so much time with kids during the week. And I'm afraid that this lost world has more influence than the church anymore. Parents don't bring their families to church anymore. Kids barely know who Jesus is, let alone anything about the Bible. So how can we expect them to know where they can find their Savior and receive his blessings? 
You see, it's only through Jesus Christ that we have any hope at all. And where can we find Jesus? No, it's not in the woods, even though you see the fingerprints of the Creator. It's not in your homes when you're sleeping in on Sunday morning. It's not in the good works that you think you do or the warm feelings you get afterwards. Even online church, though it's necessary for the safety of some, it too cannot be a permanent substitute for being in the Lord's house, receiving his gifts of word and sacrament, worshiping with the whole company of saints on earth and in heaven. You see, it's within these walls, it's within this community of believers, it's in his Father's house, it's in our Father's house, that we find Jesus Christ present. But here's the good news. Even when we fail to direct others, or even when we ourselves find ourselves wandering and lost in our sin, Jesus is still here, waiting for us in our Father's house, waiting, waiting for us to find him. He says he must be here. Did you not know that I must be in my Father's house? That's the wonderful thing about this text, is it clearly tells us where Jesus may be found. We don't have to go looking for him. It's only in our Father's house that you hear the gospel clearly proclaimed. The gospel that says Jesus died for your sins so that you might live. It's only in our Heavenly Father's house where the sacraments are given. Where water and word combine to wash away our iniquities. Where the body and blood of Jesus are present in, with, and under the bread and wine and holy communion of heaven and earth. It is in our Father's house that we hear his word and receive his gifts. This is where those searching for meaning and answers can truly find them. Even those among us who have wandered off may still find their way back. Jesus cares about them too. And the Holy Spirit indeed does its work in the hearts of men, even in those who fight against it. Jesus is found here in the church. But he's also the one out there in the world calling us to where we may be found. Our Father sends His Son to bring us home. Our Heavenly Father frantically searches for us sinners in this fallen, broken world through fellow Christians so that we may reside with Him here in His house and eventually in our home in heaven. God gathers us together from around the world to worship Him in His house. And even though we may get lost, Jesus may always be found. And that's the gift that we're able to give to others who have also lost their way. You see, our Lord is equipping us with the knowledge of where to find Jesus so that others may be led to that same place. Jesus is never lost or hidden if you know where to look. He very clearly tells us where he is. There's no guessing game to this. He is here with us in our Father's house. I can't possibly say it enough, even though you may get tired of hearing it. Those that search for Jesus and all these other places will never find him. Why look anywhere else when he has already told us where he will be? I must be in my father's house. And that's where he wants us to be as well. To be safe with him. Not wandering lost in this world, but right there, right by his side. So my dear friends, may we never turn away from Christ. May we always find joy here in our Father's house. May it be the place where we may be found, along with our Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. And dear friends, if you'd like to submit your tithes and offerings to the church, you may do so by mailing Emmanuel Lutheran Church, P.O. Box 35, Eagle Bend, Minnesota, or St. Matthew's Lutheran Church, P.O. Box 425 in Clarissa, Minnesota, or simply go online to eaglevalleylcms.org, uh, click on our online giving page or donation page. Uh, there's an online giving option. Click on either button for either church, depending on where your membership is. And you can set up a one-time gift or a recurring gift. Uh, you can kind of set it and forget, a, forget about it and let it take over. Um, and as always, we pray that God would provide you and your family with what you need. And if ever you are in need, please let God's house know. Uh, come to the church and let us know so that we may help. Dear friends, let us go to our Lord in prayer. You may follow along with the versicles on page 286 of your hymnal. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. 
In the day of my trouble I call upon you, for you answer me. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you, for you have been my help. And in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured into our hearts the true light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light may shine forth in our lives through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. And dear friends, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And before we depart this morning, we have a few announcements here. Uh, we are resuming our confirmation class this Sunday. Uh, that'll start at 1 o'clock. We also have a joint elders meeting here at Emmanuel uh, at 4 o'clock, so please join us for that. Uh, then annual meetings for Emmanuel will be January 9th at 12 o'clock, and then St. Matthew's on January 16th following the service. Uh, please do note that service times have, have changed. Uh, that starts today, January 2nd. Uh, Emmanuel will be switching to the 9 o'clock schedule, and St. Matthew's will be switching to the 1030 schedule. Uh, so please be aware of that. Also, if there's any quilters out there, Lutheran Island Camp is hosting their January quilt retreat on January 25th through the 30th. Uh, come on out to the island for some fellowship, relaxation, of course, quilting of all things. Uh, registration is open for the retreat. You can register online. Uh, the cost is $265 for five nights. If you're only staying for two or three nights, though, the camp is flexible. Uh, just call them and they can give you uh, different pricing options for how long you would like to stay. I believe that's it in the way of announcements, dear friends. I pray that God would continue to bless each and every one of you as we come to the close of our Christmas season, as we move forward into the season of Epiphany. Uh, have a very happy new year. We hope to see you here in God's house where Christ may be found. So go in God's peace, dear friends. <laughs>